Hello, this is Keith Lockhart from Oxygen Training, and this video is going to discuss the Key Scout application. The Key Scout application is one of the tools available in the Tool Suite concept of the Forensic Detective product. Key Scout is a standalone application that can be run locally or on the go when we look at kind of the use cases of the last two bullets there, and we'll discuss both those use cases. But when we talk about what Key Scout is and does, we have to kind of venture down the road we do in the boot camp course about using your powers for good. So Key Scout allows a user the power to search through and collect information that might possibly be information that, you know, could be protected in some shape or fashion by the operating system, by uh, legality in the jurisdiction of use, by morals, <laughs> by anything. And when I show you how the Key Scout works, especially in the use case of on the go, meaning we'll take an on the go device or a USB device and put the Key Scout application on that device so it can walk around with us and collect data wherever we might be and bring it back to the lab, you really got to start thinking about what you're doing, what you might be collecting, and how that might or might not be a good thing. So it's a tool. I don't certainly don't want to deprive anybody of the capability to do this, but I will say, use your powers for good. Don't get yourself in trouble. This could lead to some scope creep as far as things you might have access to or not. However, when you're in the position to need this information, it is a vital tool for the toolkit. I mean, this could be a time-sensitive, life-saving, wow, we need to get some data from an account right now. We don't know the credentials. However, the percentage of success of what we're trying to do goes up greatly if we can get to a machine run Key Scout against it and possibly get the credentials back that we need. Or maybe some email information or browser information or iPhone backups, iTunes backups if we can get to the box where we might not have the phone but we have a backup of it. Key Scout allows all kinds of uh, data collection and we'll kind of explore that as we talk about what's going on. So we've kind of already touched on the information gathering component. When we run Key Scout, its whole job is to search. You know, we can configure how that search is going to go provide different parameters, uh, different depths of search, maybe we don't have a lot of time, things we save from the search, we can limit that and maybe we're just doing a, a smash and grab so we won't need credentials really quickly, or maybe we're really digging through all the media hooked up to a particular machine to try to go find backups or artifacts or mail or, or things that Key Scout will gather for us while it's running. Important for us to know, the OCPK file, the Oxygen Credential Package, Listen, one of Key Scout's primary functionalities is to feed the cloud extractor. Now, what I mean by that is when you're trying to access cloud account based data and need credentials to supply the cloud account, Key Scout is what grabs that data for you from a machine. Or, as you'll see inside Detective, when you finally pull extracted data into a case, the accounts and passwords section is the same information that would be contained in an OCPK file. Now, you'll see a button in the tool called Export to OCPK. We'll talk about why you do that and what that means, but this is the literal ability to grab the account data to feed the cloud extractor. Or if you're gathering lots of other data in a grander fashion, which with much more space to be taken up, the Oxygen Desktop Backup might contain email archives, iTunes backups, browser artifacts, there's a whole plethora as our big word for the day of tools or areas that Key Scout can collect from. And this ability, these options to collect from all these different areas, is a 12x version of Key Scout and higher. So if that's new to you, pay particular attention as we go through this video and know what you have in front of you when you upgrade to the new detective. Okay, so to round this conversation out, listen, you can run Key Scout in the lab, which means the use case would be if you have a target drive that you could mount virtually, you know, a VHD or a VM session, something like that, assign a drive letter to it, you can launch Key Scout against it, like it's a running machine. Or, if you're out in the field, in a cave, I don't know where you are, but you need the ability to run against a machine right in front of you, whip out that USB drive with Key Scout on it, plug it in, run it, collect all kinds of things back to that USB and get back to the lab. Okay, let's see how this works. So I'll access Key Scout from the Tools section of our home screen in Oxygen Forensic Detective. You see we got two options here, Launch Key Scout and Add Key Scout to Removable Media. 
Let's just discuss those really quickly because each one is relevant to the two use cases we just talked about. Launching Key Scout from here almost seems nonsensical because you really wouldn't want to go install Detective on your target machine just so you could run Key Scout. So it's great from a demonstrative purpose, that's fantastic. However, the reality of the use case is mount that target drive on the same box as your detective box and you can hit it as a drive letter and collect just like from before. Or you can add it to removable media like an on-the-go device or a USB drive that we talked about you could have in your pocket or your go kit and that's as simple as hitting the link and then navigating to the drive that you want to save Key Scout to. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and run it from here as we talked about from the demonstrative perspective. Okay, so when the interface starts, you can see we've got a couple options off the bat. One is, have a look at our settings. And it could be that we want to add particular passwords to help us maybe break other password things open, like a Mozilla keychain, or tell the tool to search different places, or exclude different places than that are the defaults. And specifically new to the 12 version is all of these selectable tools or applications that we can collect data from or not. Again, depending on your situation, got a lot of time, got a lot of space in your USB drive, okay, or you're in the smash and grab mode and you only need Skype, or only Firefox, right, these are all selectable boxes. Okay, and then of course we can read the about and the help, and I just want to show you in the help for a second, a really quick synopsis of credential and application data apps that we can go after, including operating systems we can do and then a couple of command line options if you want to get crazy during your Key Scout implementation. That's accessible from the help. Okay, let's have a look at the search. So when I click on search, you can see we've got several options available to us. Custom, where you could enact some of those settings I talked about a minute ago, but there are some default. Fast, optimal, and full, and you can kind of see a little description of what those are doing underneath. Let's just see how this works. I'll click fast and start the search. Key Scout takes off against the live drives on this machine, and eh, we'll fast forward a little bit in time to get to the end of it, and we'll see what Key Scout comes out with on the other side. Okay, my results are done. 3 minutes and 14 seconds, checking 96 directories. By default, I didn't make any changes to any of those settings. And what did we get? Oh boy, 133 passwords and 4 tokens. That's bad all by itself. Out of 5 different applications, 260 meg of data. Hmm, we'll have a look at that. One backup found that's 12.5 gig. Huh, okay, well let's look here. Passwords and tokens. Wow, if we just have a bad look at all of the autocomplete passwords and account information on here, this is probably, yeah, let's just not spend a lot of time here. Okay, but if we look at the applications, hmm, I'm not a big Internet Explorer guy. It stands to reason there's nothing there. I am a Chrome guy, which is why there's 50 meg of data there. I do some Mozilla stuff, 30, uh, 32 meg of data there. I'm a Skype guy, lots of data there. And Windows Mail, hmm. This is just crazy. If I have a look, well, I've got uh, FTK Jedi account information for Skype, Slylock account information for Skype. I don't even want to see what's in my Google. Uh, yeah, all kinds of internet browser based data. Let's see, Internet Explorer, nothing there. Okay. But the ability for Key Scout to go out and grab artifact data from all of these locations, including, in this case, Windows Mail. I've got a Unistore database out of there. There could be Outlook PSTs. Who knows what we're going to find. From a backup perspective, that's my backup of my iPhone 10, um, 12 and a half gig. Notice, though, tick box, right? All of these are boxes available for ticking or not. What are you trying to export or save out or not? All selectable. Again, if you're in smash and grab mode, I probably would not take the iPhone backup. I probably, well, I don't know, it's up to what you're after. Um, if you don't do all this and just take their credentials, you'll have that OCPK file, that credential package, that lets you take this autocomplete username, password, 
or if we have token recovery, and feed it to the cloud extractor. We'll see that here soon. But if you got time, maybe who knows what you're doing, select it all. Put the backups out there, get it out there, and you'll have that Oxygen desktop backup. It takes a minute to save uh, because of all the size, but again, up to you based on what your preference, what you're trying to get done. You can see a log of everything that was searched through. And that's it. My search is over. I could go back and run another version of the search if I wanted to do it. I could save information out. Again, depending on your size, space, and time, I'm not going to save anything right now. But let's look at what happens with our results. Let me cancel that. And I'm just going to close Key Scout altogether at this point and hit my extractions. And let's see where I have some data that would be OCPK relative. How about, ah, Allison's phone's a good one. Accounts and passwords. And all I do is take the accounts and passwords section, right, just to refresh. All I'm doing is going to Allison's phone and using the account and password section where we go and aggregate by account, by password, and by token capability everything we can get. And if you see the cloud icon, that indicates that credentials or tokens could be used to access that data. Look, Extract with Cloud Extractor will send that information straight to the Cloud Extractor or Save Accounts Data. And look what it says. Save accounts data to Oxygen Credential Package. Look, a large chunk of analyst machines are not hooked up to the Internet as a practice. However, somebody is. So if you can't use this information in conjunction with a cloud extractor online, save it out to an OCPK file and give it to someone else who can. Right? And what I mean by that is, just so we have an idea, I'll just go back to the home screen really quick where I can grab the cloud extractor. And on the main menu of the Cloud Extractor, we'll see the option right there. Feed me an OCPK file. Well, it's probably not that uh, direct as feed me, but it is import credential package. That's pretty straightforward. And it says import credentials generated by Oxygen Forensic Detective, which we just saw, or Key Scout, which we just saw. If you click that, it's looking for that OCPK file. So you're going to get a 360 degree idea of why Key Scout's here, what it can do, and how it circles back to, listen, if we don't get it from a target machine, we're going to get it from the handset or the device we pull into Detective. And if we don't get it from Detective, we're going to go get it from the target machine. And I think one of the most relevant or important use cases that we could talk about with this is a young adult's missing, the handset phone is missing with them, we can't get that, but this is a cooperative recovery effort, so we are given credentials to get into the cloud accounts, where we can go find geolocation that's real-time for that missing device, which is probably, hopefully, with that missing person. That's tried and true. This is a great tool. I know people get leery about scope creep when it comes to the cloud. However, exigent circumstance is not a bad situation. Articulation is not a bad concept. You have the tool available whether it's against a map drive or detective pulling the same information from a handset as far as extraction information, key scout capability to acquire that account information or those web artifacts or those mails or those backups, can't leave that out of the toolbox. Okay, thanks for spending the time. Hopefully that's helpful. Let us know how it turns out for you. I'll speak to you later.